Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to UNICEF Global's Mission Idea Contest Lecture Series. Today, we are honored to have Professor Weno present the second lecture in the series of five lectures to assist you with your mission design ideas for MIC-7. Today's lecture will cover science operations of space missions. Before we start, some housekeeping reminders uh, that questions to Professor Weno are welcome. Uh, and please post them in chat. Our schedule is such that the lecture will run again for approximately 60 minutes, followed by a Q&A session, a group photo, and some mix seven reminders. And today I'll be going over some of the requirements for you. For now, it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Weno. Professor Weno is the research director and engineering manager, Space Exploration Innovation Hub Center at JAXA, and a professor at the Graduate School of Science, Kobe University. He obtained his PhD in physics from Kyoto University, Japan in 1992, joining the Department of Earth Science and Astronomy, University of Tokyo, Tokyo. and he moved to the Institute of Space and Astronautical Sciences ISIS, JAXA, in 2009. His former occupations were the head of Mission Instrument Technology Group, the director of ISIS program office, and chief engineer of JAXA. Ueno Sensei moved to the Center for Planetary Science, Kobe University, in 2016, and moved back to JAXA in 2019. He has also served as the director of Astronomical Society of Japan, and also serves as the chair of Standing Space Agency Subcommittee, International Project Management Committee, also vice chair of Standing Space Agency Subcommittee, Knowledge Management Technical Committee. So Ueno Sensei, we are very honored to have you here and I would like to welcome you to begin your presentation. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Nate. Yeah, it is my great pleasure to have a lecture here. And uh, let me introduce a little bit. And thank you for your very kind introduction for me. And I will start to share my presentation now. Just. Yeah. I'm talking about the science operation of a space mission today. And uh, first introduction of myself was done with kindly with NATO. So I will skip this page. And what is my start point of my research? Uh, at the beginning of my research life, uh, astronomy is the main theme for me, and mostly in instrumentation of the uh, ground-based telescope, just like a Subaru telescope in Japan. And next, I moved to uh, space missions. Uh, name of the mission was Akari, Infrared Astronomical Satellite. And this is Japanese first uh, dedicated mission for the infrared astronomy. And this is the image taken by the Akari satellite, just the Milky Way at infrared wavelengths. And uh, I was involved in development of camera, infrared camera, and the, uh, some of the image here, just like some of the star forming regions in the sky, and in, also in our Milky Way. This is uh, my first step for the space science uh, missions in Japan. And then I moved to the uh, planetary missions like uh, Venus orbiter, Akatsuki. And uh, in the Akatsuki project, uh, uh, I was conducting the all scientific payload in the mission, uh, five cameras I will introduce later. And then I moved to Hisaki project, but as well as the development of the uh, space missions, uh, I was conducting or directing the space missions in JAXA and uh, later 
I was directing the、uh, systems engineering and the project management in any missions in JAXA. And、uh, during my、uh, directing period, I was involved in the recovered sample analysis of the Hayabusa project, just like、uh, this is.、Uh, this is a、uh, sample of Hayabusa, very tiny particles. Or, or almost 100 micron or something like that.、Uh, this was very small and tiny particle at that time. And Hayabusa too got、uh, quite large samples now. And this is some、uh, photograph for, to release、uh, the detection of the、uh, asteroidal particle in Hayabusa capsules. And、uh, I am talking about the science operation. And today's talk, yes, where will your space career take you? My talk there is not limited to the space development. This is a concept that can be defined in many fields of work, but it is useful in the way you think. About the development of what we call systems. Systems. I will introduce what is systems later. In particular, I think that those of you who are listening to this talk today are thinking about the creating and pro proposing missions in MIC7. Yes. And today, I will focus on the space science and deep space exploration. As I mentioned at the beginning, I believe that this content is useful for projects in a wide range of fields. In the title of my talk, I use the keyword science operations. What is science operations? In space science and space exploration missions, the term science operations encompassed. Very wide range of activity. In space missions, operation usually refers to operation or control of the spacecraft itself. While the word operation may, may be, some of you remind you of just the surgical operations, something like that. But in space missions, it refers to operation and control of the spacecraft itself. The time. So, science operation does not just refer to how to control the spacecraft, but includes all the process you will get the、uh, scientific result and also the scientific products. Science, so, science operation refers only, not only for the、uh, control of space. Craft, but also to the entire process of creating a science result. And also,、uh, how do you get the data? And also, how do you analyze it? And how do you organize the team of scientists to maximize the scientific output? So, Science operation covers a very wide field of、uh, space activities to get the final product of the mission. And this is a very important point and an important aspect of space missions. So,、uh, in these days, some of the p e r s o n use the、uh, outcomes of this work, something like this. Is. And,、uh, but at the beginning, you may feel、uh, this must be a very tedious step to consider. But in many jobs, not just space science and exploration missions, grounding the design of the job from the development to the result obtained by the stakeholder is a key, very important key to success. Project or any businesses. Yes. The mission you are working on this time is relatively small in size. You will need to think with a lot of limitations. 
very limited resource, mass, size, and it is difficult to include so many things in your mission. So it will be good if you could first think carefully about the goal of the missions, then you can enjoy limitations. And some people may think a mission that has been done in the past. Maybe you know many missions name, uh, just like something, some spacecraft for the uh, space exploration or Mars exploration or something like that. And some people want to uh, demonstration their own technique. So they will think about the unusual technique uh, they want to try it out. This must be very natural way at the beginning. Many cases, yes, this is uh, actually in many cases in the scientific uh, missions. However, the most important thing is to clarify the objective and think about what is necessary to achieve it. From the perspective of creating result, it is not enough to simply create something and obtain some data, but it is important. Uh, it is properly linked to result what you develop. The purpose of the project can be either science discovery or a technological challenge, but it is important that the purpose is clear and that the design is done properly to achieve the purpose. Even some large scale missions have failed to produce sufficient results because of inadequate consideration of this aspect. I will first introduce the importance of operations. Think about operations. And then introduce the concept of system design to realize the mission objectives. This is the introduction of systems engineering process, a method often used in the space development process. And when you think about mission design, you will notice that there are many necessary things and functional requirements standing side by side. For example, two different actions or two different devices may be required to uh, uh, execute a single object, objective. However, the two or more actions required many may be incompatible or some cases exclusive. If this problem is not considered at the beginning, a lot of preparation may end in vain. It is not easy to put this much thought into a mission proposal. And the evaluators may not even realize it. However, it will be an important issue in the actual development of the missions. For example, the operation of communicating data to the ground station is often incompatible with observational operations or technical challenges. For communications, the high gain antenna of the spacecraft need to be pointed towards the Earth, but the instrument will often have other operational constraints, just like some direction of the spacecraft itself. In general, it may not be possible to satisfy these two at the same time. This is also something to think about carefully. For this reason, it is important to consider the scheduling of the operations to a certain extent, not an instant. And to think about what kind of operations are actually needed at the beginning, if there are actually conflicting requirements, it may be necessary to rethink the design or select the right function or cut off some of the function. You will also be constrained by the size, weight, and the development requirement of the mission as a whole. 
Therefore, I believe that you will face some challenges in the process of mission planning. In order to prepare these challenges, it is very, very important to consider the priorities of what is necessary to achieve the goals, starting with the most important issue. For example, we have just, I was working, we have a Japanese mission called Akatsuki, which is a Venus probe. This mission is equipped with five cameras, five cameras. It was required to track the movement of the clouds in the Venusian atmosphere while observing Venus every two hours in order to solve the mystery of super rotation of the Venusian atmosphere. Every two hours data will give us the movement of the cloud in the atmosphere, which is a major goal of this mission. It is truly a meteorological observation satellite on Venus. In the Akatsuki spacecraft, all five cameras are mounted fixed to the spacecraft. Similarly, the antenna, high gain antenna are also fixed to the spacecraft. And since the Earth is really in the orbital plane of Akatsuki, just the orbital plane is the uh, orbit around the Venus, observation of the Venusian atmospheres and the communication to the Earth are incompatible, unfortunately. However, in order to deliver the minimum amount of imaging data calculated from the requirement, it was necessary to communicate with the ground station continuously for eight hours per day. This is the problem. And this is the spacecraft of Akatsuki. You may see this is a high gain antenna, flat type antenna here and the uh, direction of the antenna uh, gain is just the perpendicular to this direction. And uh, we have five cameras, uh, one, two, three, four, five cameras. And all cameras are fixed body mount, just the body mount to the spacecraft. So the direction uh, of the center of Venus must be this direction, and the Earth must be this direction. And uh, this cannot be uh, realized uh, usually. Uh, very rare timing we have the uh, communication during the observation, but most of the cases we cannot give up uh, is uh, communication of observation. And uh, five cameras on board Akatsuki mission, we have five. One is one micron camera, just uh, slightly longer than the visible wavelengths, and two micron camera, and ultraviolet camera, and thermal wind cloud cameras, and some of the camera can catch the uh, lightning in the atmosphere. And uh, this is because uh, the, some of the camera, so just like a ultraviolet camera, can reach the very surface of the Venus atmosphere, only outer part of the atmosphere. And two micron camera can uh, see almost uh, 30 kilometer altitude of the sky of Venus, not the ground, but uh, in some altitude will emit the thermal emission of a higher temperature of Venus atmosphere. And one micron camera can penetrate to the ground level of Venus. So, uh, different wavelengths can cover the different altitude of Venus, Venusian atmosphere. So the difference of two 
uh, combination of uh, such like a one micron camera and a two micron camera can uh, give us the uh, movement of the cloud under the 30 kilometer altitude, just like this. So the two hours uh, separation data is very important to track the cloud in the very low layer and in some cases in higher layer. So the two hours interval is very essential for the mission result. And the, this is the orbital design of Akatsuki spacecraft just like this. The spacecraft will have a same speed, same speed to the super rotation speed of the atmosphere of the Venus, just like this. And the camera will track just like this. And also the altitude of the spacecraft is uh, uh, quite different at, at the positioning of the spacecraft itself. So the, the image from Akatsuki spacecraft, the Venus is some case is very close and some case is very far. So this is just like a animation image taken by the Akatsuki spacecraft. Just like this. So, and since the spacecraft is far from the Earth, it may take up to almost 30 minutes for the radio wave to travel back and forth, depending on the distance from the Earth. And the single sequence observations itself takes about 20 minutes for five cameras. In our last, there will be a dead time of about 45 minutes before the first connection is made because uh, we need a communication link between spacecraft and the Earth ground station. Uh, we need some handshake process to negotiate uh, the communication start. So it requires a certain uh, interval to start the uh, communication link. The implication is that if we carry out observation every two hours, including the time required to the change of attitude of the spacecraft, there will be a dead time of more than one hour or just like one hour every two hours, which means that we will be able to transmit less than half the amount of data we had planned. This meant that we had to make a tough choice, either give up observation during the communication time or prioritize observations by reducing the communication time. As a result, it became difficult to acquire and send continuous data every two hours for, for us, which was the original purpose of the missions, unfortunately. The design of the Akatsuki spacecraft had all the necessary equipment for the observational purpose, and the spacecraft as a whole had a sufficient functions and the performance to meet the individual requirement. However, because we did not sufficiently consider how to allocate the instruments and how to operate them from the standpoint of actual operations. The instruments were not able to demonstrate their full potential, but the mission so the mission you are about to consider in MIC-7 is very small spacecraft, even compared to Akatsuki spacecraft. Akatsuki well, is not so large missions in the today's level, but still very tiny mission for your case. You will be faced with a tough selection process and a very limited boundary conditions 
And you will have to consider first whether it is feasible, including the operations. The Akatsuki spacecraft produced uh, the world's first meteorological observations of Venus, being able to capture many unknown phenomena and produce many scientific results, very fortunately. But the success of the mission could have been much greater if the initial consideration had been sufficient. For example, if the antenna could have been operated with a certain degree of freedom, some of the problem could have been solved. However, due to the limited weight or mass budget or power budget of the spacecraft, we would have to give up some of the cameras in exchange for the resource required for the operation. However, this would have led to a greater result in some cases. As you can see, it is very important thing about the actual operation at the beginning of the mission design. This is very important point. And let me introduce some of the scientific highlights of Akatsuki spacecraft. This is a two micron cameras and the movie, movie image makes just like this. This is a night side of Venus, just a thermal radiation. And uh, very bright side is a day side of Venus. And this is a terminator between day and night. And IR2 is mounted fixed on this. And this has very high spatial resolution for the Venusian atmosphere, just like this. And this is very fine. Uh, this camera can trace the very fine structure of the cloud in the Venus. And oh, I will skip this. And as a result, is a first discovery of the bow shape structure in the highest uh, atmosphere of Venus, just like this. You can see some of the uh, shape in the Venusian atmosphere. And this image was taken by the 10 micron camera, just the uh, temperature variation at the surface of the Venusian atmosphere, very high altitude. At the beginning, uh, we had some trouble with the camera, but uh, this types of shape was discovered in many cases in some uh, geometry of the Venus and the spacecraft. And we found that the origin of these types of uh, phenomena, just some of the uh, wave from the Grand Mountain or something like that. This is very uh, interesting discovery in the science. And I will skip this. And let me move to the uh, systems engineering approach. Yeah, I was mentioned at the beginning. And what is the systems engineering approach? Mission design and systems engineering and also the project planning. And important approach in the systems engineering is to clarify the objectives and requirements of many layers. Many layer means as a layer of mission objectives. And also we have as a requirement layer, just like a mission requirement and mission requirement will give us the, some of the system requirement. System requirement means some of the requirement you will measure something or you will operate something just like this. So uh, system requirement will 
uh, give us another requirement for the component of the spacecraft. Just like the, uh, for example, if you need to uh, move the spacecraft at some uh, speed you need, then we have to prepare some of the uh, component to control the spacecraft in a certain speed or something like that. And why do we need requirements? You have to clarify the source or origin of the requirement from the beginning to the system level requirement. Because I will introduce later some cases you cannot prepare all necessary system component in the very limited resource budget. So in some cases, you have to give up some of the system instrument. And in, if you know the, the origin of the uh, component requirement from the uh, mission objectives, what you can remove out some of the uh, system component with very limited degradation of the mission objective. And this is very important step you, when you uh, consider about the mission design. And so it is very important to clarify the uh, properties of requirements just like that. And in many cases, you have to face some of the trade-off of uh, process in many requirement layers. And what is the driver of the design? So this is very important step. And when you fix a mission design, Design of the spacecraft also be feasible to confirm the readiness of the mission. Conceptual design work is needed, including mission operation, just I introduced before. And you also need the verification plan of the requirement of the mission before you launch. Uh, in some cases, uh, total verification is very, very difficult uh, to operate. Then you have to consider about the, how do you verify the proper function of the spacecraft in grand, uh, during your ground level test. And systems engineering must be very important. These early phase of mission design. So if you start developing the spacecraft, it is very difficult to change the design, ground design. So it is very important to consider at the beginning. And this is very important point. And what is system? And what is systems engineering? This I quoted the system engineering handbook from NASA systems engineering handbook. The objective of systems engineering is to see to it that the system is designed, built and operated so that it accomplishes its purpose in the most cost-effective way possible considering performance, cost, schedule, and risk. So, uh, systems engineering is something like the cost effective or some uh, resource effective way under the very limited uh, boundary conditions, just like a space missions. Oh, just like this. And the system of engineering is a very, very methodical, disciplinary approach for the design, realization, technical management, operation, and retirement of a system. 
And what is a system? A system is a collection of different elements or different functions that together produce results not obtained by the uh, single element alone, just like your body, human body. Human body is very uh, difficult and a very complicated system, but some of the sample of very good system. Because you may know many, many small component with our finger, or some of the very, very uh, element component of our body cannot do anything, but in total, human body can work very well, just like this. System is just like this. And elements can include people. Uh, this is for the case of space missions. Elements can include people, hardware, software, and facilities, and also the policy. And one important thing is documents. And all elements required to produce system level result. And the systems engineering is the art and the science of developing an opera operative system capable to meeting requirements within imposed constraint, very limited boundary conditions. And not dominated by the perspective of a single discipline, yeah, this is, in many cases, you feel this against this. In some cases, you, you will face some of the trouble with, to uh, organize the mission with some single discipline. But you need to balance all the requirement of the mission in total. So this is very important to uh, get a successful mission. And the responsibility of engineer or scientists and managers working together. This is very important because we have to make many layers of trade-off studies and uh, we need to consider the value of the uh, trade-off studies and uh, we have to consider about the co-engineering side and also the scientific product uh, in parallel in many cases. And this slide, a little bit complicated, and but the flow of the systems engineering from the scientific objectives or engineering challenges. This is the main team main theme of the missions you will have. And uh, some of the science, scientific objectives or engineering challenge requires the scientific measurement or technical demonstrations. So it will read the requirement for the mission payload. And some of the, some of the observations or some of the challenging work will require some special operational requirement. For example, the space telescope requires very uh, stable uh, control of the spacecraft, just like this, just like uh, Hubble Space Telescope or something like that. But in, uh, for example, Japanese mission Hayabusa, it requires some of the very a critical work just to make a touching down to the asteroid or something like that. This is a special requirement for the mission, just like this. And it will read the requirement for the system level component, or in some cases, orbit, just the orbital design of the spacecraft, and or in some cases, launchers, and also in the space exploration, just a planetary exploration, you, you have to fix the flight date because of the uh, 
uh, target planet uh, have to uh, allocate in some positions from the Earth. So the flight data is some cases very important issue for the requirement. And also these two requirement will read the spacecraft design. This is your goal this time, but you have to consider about the uh, operation and also the data link, just the communication link to the ground station. And uh, this whole process will result in the some adequate spacecraft design just like this. And this kind of step is very, very important for the successful mission design. And project planning and purpose and objectives of the project, you have to clarify these types of requirement or objectives first. What, what do you need for the mission? Key question to be answered. This is very important. And oh, in many cases, because I was taking care of the, any space mission in JAXA, so I was discussing with many, many scientific team uh, who proposed the new mission. But in many cases, even for the very, very uh, well-studied uh, scientific uh, researchers, they have some ambiguity of the key question of the missions, even for the professional scientists. But this have to clarify at the beginning because if you are not well know about the goal of this mission, it is very difficult to design the spacecraft itself. So you have to clarify these types of key questions to be answered or key technical performance parameters or challenging and the technical and the programmatic constraint, just a boundary condition. Just like uh, you will have the boundary condition of the mass or uh, launcher's capability or some of the uh, dead time, a uh, deadline of the uh, launch time or something like that. So you have to uh, well know about the boundary condition itself. And also the regulation or uh, policy, space policy of the, uh, your countries. And technology availability is very important because you cannot make any missions with uh, unavailable technology. So, and in uh, most of the case in the space agency, uh, potential cost and the scheduled drivers and also very important. And also the, uh, you have to consider about the reuse of the exist, existing equipment or product. This is a very straightforward way to get a successful instrument on board this uh, mission. And uh, in this case, yeah, in your cases, this is not so important, but availability of human resources is very important in the actual development of the spacecraft. Because in, even in the uh, space agencies, the human resource is very limited and uh, very skilled pathways, very, very limited, even in the space agency. So uh, the total mass of the human resource is also limited in many cases. So you have to design the spacecraft within the uh, uh, human resources you can get in the 
agency or something like. In business case, this is almost the same situation. And uh, risk assessment and development approach. Uh, this is very important for us, but maybe this is not so serious for your case this time. And oh, sorry. objective is, is high level motivation. Motivation is very important. Which science question purpose shall the project address? What answer you think? Requirement is the translation of this objective into very uh, verifiable statement, just a requirement level, what is needed to achieve the objective. And also the solution is the response to the all requirement. And maybe this is very difficult uh, as a beginning of your design, but this must be very important if you try to uh, develop the, even the small satellite, you have to consider about this type's flow. And mission objective must be very clear. And uh, also in the uh, large scale missions, scientific objectives is also respond to the scientific community itself, but very important to be uh, appearing general public uh, because of the uh, so large cost to develop the uh, spacecraft for the scientific mission. And uh, this is, in cases, very important point. And uh, also, you have many choice to realize some of the objective, scientific objectives or technical challenge. So the space mission, you have to demonstrate why you choose the space mission as a test bench for the science output or a technology challenge. So because uh, space is not an easy place to demonstrate. So uh, you have enough reason to choose the space mission for the, uh, your test field. This is also a very important point. And why do we need a requirement? Very important process. To provide motivation and focus to the project, communicate to others what shall be achieved, answer the why, and specifying the what, and addressing the how. To identify the trade off of a best solution or a better solution and place priority on possible solution and you have some options. And priority helps resolve the conflicting requirement I mentioned. And in some cases, you have to give up some of the objectives of the missions. We call it the scope process and provide specification to engineering and lower level subsystems. Yes, this is important. Downflow of the missions. So, so the mission statement. Just to capture the objective and the measurement requirement in a single sentence. So you have to uh, tell us uh, in the very simple sin, uh, sentence about your missions. And the requirement, formal statement expressing what is needed to fulfill the mission objectives. And also requirements shall be product related, not process related. And this is very important 
point, but in some cases, uh, process related matter looks very important for you, but uh, you have to see from the very higher level of the development. And the career requirements are key, very important issue to good design. Requirements are hierarchical. Lower level system requirement shall come from higher level mission requirement, just the mission objectives. And this is the good example and bad example of the requirement. Good example must be very, very specific one, just like the mission shall provide a measurement of the parameter constant with the accuracy better than 10 to the minus third or something like that. Or the mission shall allow scanning of the sky with an angular rate of 10 arc minutes per second around the axis of rotation, which is 90 degree away from the sun dire solar direction. Or the mission shall have nominal in-orbit duration up to three years or something like that. This is very specific requirement and good examples. And but the bad examples are something like this. The system design shall maximize the spectral resolution or scientific output. This is not a specific one or something like the mass shall be as low as possible, just like this. So you have to specify the goal of the requirement very clearly. Awesome. And the trade-off allows exploring alternative solution to a baseline. So trade-off studies is very important for the systems engineering process. The parameter space needs to be prepared and the evaluation criterion shall be established using requirements. Most common criteria Mass budget, cost budget, or something like that is very also very, very important issue. And requirement and the design driver. So you have to identify of design driver and the result of requirement analysis. Well, first, it, uh, first iteration during the definition of mission concept. Iteration means uh, uh, if you have some travel uh, with some mass budget or resource budget or something like that, you have to go back to the mission objective to cut off or some degree uh, the scope process to cut out some of the objectives at the beginning, then you have to think about the requirement layer and the system requirement layer or something like that. Then you have to check that all the feasible mission can be within the boundary condition or something like that. Then you have something trouble with the boundary condition too, then you have to go back again and again, just like this. So in this case, do you have a size limit or mass budget limit uh, for the MIC7? So you have to consider about this process, just the iteration of the uh, system engineering process. process. And the design drivers concentrate flexibility of system design and classify the requirement. In some requirement, unavoidable requirement or some of the requirement can be negotiable or something like that. So you have to list down the priority of the requirement in many layers. And, 
And the typical unavoidable design driver, just like a mission profile or lower level communications or power generation. You cannot uh, remove out these types of requirement from the spacecraft. But in some of the case, the planning of the telemetry downlink budget or operational cost range constraints can be negotiable in many cases. So you have to consider of, uh, what kind of requirement can be unavoidable or can be negotiable or something like that. The art of science development operative, operative system capable of meeting mission requirement within Impose the constraint, just a boundary condition, including mass budget and the cost budget and the schedule budget, or something like that, and satisfy in an optimal manner all the requirements. Require a trade off involving diverse system or disciplines. You have many uh, subsystem level requirements just like this. You have to write down any requirement of any layers. And you need to identify what is the important parameter and how they are related to the uh, mission objectives. And define the compare a small number of different possible scenarios. Maybe you have many choice to realize single goal. But you have to select some of the uh, suitable way to realize the mission and to choose the most promising option and perform a more detailed design, including space and ground segment, and also your operations. And system design and to end view. Initial study phase, analysis, mission, analysis of mission objectives, you have to understand what you need in the mission objectives. And also the mission constraints, just the boundary conditions or something like that. And you have to define a scientific requirement. What is the requirement from the mission objectives? And also you have to define the mission architecture and also payload performance. And uh, you have to analyze environment and then you have to go down to the design floor to the system level. And also you need iteration and trade-off study phase I told. And uh, your goal is also the feasible mission profile and the satisfying requirement and the constellation, just like this view graph, just a mission concept, just some of the mission of objectives to monitor just like this, and also communications, orbital design, and the spacecraft design, and the launcher, and the ground segment to communication link. And this is some of the sample of the uh, spacecraft system. This is a, a schematic view of the next bus in Japan, just like this. I don't uh, introduce details of this schematic diagram, but this is a very typical uh, system of the spacecraft around the Earth. So from mission definition into system definition. Generally speaking, the number of mission definition could apply to the mission objective. You have many choices. And system definition has the same situation as above, so various choices of system definition to satisfy the mission objectives or scientific objectives. 
However, the most feasible one is unique, maybe. But may, in some cases, several way you will have. But uh, it is important to find out the best compromised way. Not the best way, but best compromised way. And the feasibility is usually on the balance of uh, budget or boundary condition. And so for this is just, just the example of exercise, just for training. Suppose you are requested to measure the mass of the earth. You could find many approach to do. Your idea choice is the best and the most effective method or not? Maybe please consider about the, some training. Oh, just right. So in many cases, we have to select the best compromised definition after the cascade of trade of studies and start from start to the purpose. And the trade of studies shall be recorded in detail, even for very simple matters. Because we frequently need to go back to modify or reconsider the definition of the upper layer requirement. And uh, you have to make a trade of study again. So it is very uh, easy if you write down the trade of studies, everything. So uh, it will uh, very, it will make very easy to realize the reconsideration from the scientific objective to, to the system design. So you have to write down any tiny process of trade of studies and it will help you later. And priority and traceability of the requirement are very, very important. Uh, traceability, you will use many cases, but in the systems engineering, the traceability means what, we, what kind of uh, objective will read the what kind of requirement. So if you give up some of the requirement level, then you will find out the origin of the uh, requirement to the, in the objective layer. So this is traceability is very helpful when you consider about the scoping the missions within the boundary condition. The important thing about the systems engineering is that the uh, big goal to individual objective, then to the mission requirement, then to the system requirement, so on. This is a very iterative process. During this in-depth study, there are generally countless options. Maybe you have many choices to realize a single object, objectives. Therefore, it is very useful to record the perspectives from which the choice are made, reason you chose some uh, trade-off, including the trade-off mode. This is because in many cases, the boundary conditions will not be satisfied when you pro say, uh, proceed to the actual concrete mission design. You will have many difficulties to meet the boundary condition. In such cases, if you can look backward to see from which part of the higher level requirements for the certain part of the mission design are coming, you can know what will happen if you cut off some elements. In general, mission study often fail to meet the given boundary condition, maybe in many cases, for concrete design. So a process of iteration is necessary to go back, backward and, and, on, and also forward 
to the from the higher level to the requirement to the system level component. This iteration or cyclic process will make the mission much smarter. This is a very good way. And this is very, uh, oh, some of the, some uh, word I want to uh, introduce you. Uh, systems engineering is not a magic box, you know. It doesn't give you any mission ideas, but this is some of the tool. And it is a set of procedure that guides you through the process of fleshing out a good idea. And the most important aspect of always whether or not it is a good idea. When you follow systems engineering, you often feel that you have done a very good job and that you have done a good job even if the idea and the trade-off are not well thought out. And you often tend to conform to the guide more than necessary because systems engineering is just a flow down tools and it will help you but uh, in some cases, uh, you will be guided from the uh, regulation. This is not good for you to consider about the mission. So the important point is please remember that good ideas with good missions, not the systems engineering itself. This is tools. So uh, in the mission, uh, uh, mission contest, please enjoy the hard work of the preparation during your uh, preparation for the mission proposal. And this is uh, my last slide of today's lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof Professor Ueno, um, particularly uh, for the introduction to systems engineering approach um, and for sharing your, your learnings from uh, Akatsuki, uh, actually. Um, that was very interesting. Um, I'd like to now open the floor uh, to questions from the audience. Yeah. So uh, please, uh, if you have questions for Prof Professor Ueno, please post them in the chat. Um, we have had um, a yeah. few questions coming through. Uh, so Professor Ueno, I would mm. like to ask you the first question, which is from uh, Kevin, mm. um, who just asks, mm. what part of the mission design process is usually taking the most time uh, and deliber deliberation? Ah, it is very difficult question. Yeah, uh, to uh, clarify the objective itself is very uh, important and also requires much time uh, to find out what we need, what we really need for the mission. So, yeah. Uh, I, I think some of the, uh, some of you feel very curious, uh, but this is, yes, this is very important point. What is the most important issue for the mission itself? And you have to spend much of time on this matter, please. I see. That's actually an interesting um, uh, contrast as well to uh, whether you're looking at, um, you know, what the objective mm. is or whether you're looking at the target. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for answering that question. Uh, and next question mm. uh, is from Yasu, who uh, asks, looking back at the Akatsuki mission, what mm. is the mm. one thing that you would have done differently? For example, having less cameras, using uh, omnidirectional antennas, selection of a different orbit, or some implementation of uh, new technology? What's the one thing you would have changed or done different? Uh -huh. In the Akatsuki spacecraft, 
we realized many new things in Japan, <laughs> many new things in Japan. Uh, and uh, we have many challenging things uh, because this is our first case uh, of the inner, sat inner planetary uh, probe in Japan. So, uh, and also the uh, infrared camera on board Akatsuki, two types of infrared camera, one micron camera and two micron camera is also the first case for the planetary missions in Japan. And uh, because some of the infrared camera requires very low temperature down to almost minus 200 Kelvin, uh, 200 degree or something like that. So we have many uh, new component in the single mission, maybe too many challenge in the single mission. And uh, in some case, you have to uh, give up some of the challenge in single mission. Okay, I see. So you have to give up some of the challenges in a single mission. Um, and yeah. is, there, is there a specific component uh, that would have made, um, you know, focusing on, on one of those challenges uh, more than the others mm. uh, more successful, do you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, oh, many cases, uh, the, maybe the cameras on board. And also, this is our uh, alternative observation using the radio frequency uh, because uh, we equipped very, very stable oscillator on Akatsuki instrument. We don't need such kind of stable oscillator for the communication itself, but the very stable oscillator can measure the uh, change of the uh, radio wave pass, just like uh, if the Akatsuki pass the radio wave through the uh, atmosphere of Venus, we can monitor the difference of the variation of the uh, phase shift of the communication. So we can measure the uh, some uh, of the uh, density of the atmosphere through past the communication. This is a very alternative secret <laughs> of the mission design. I see, and that, that, that could have been, uh, I suppose, quite easily integrated into the system, mm -hmm. uh, seeing as you were already including so many so many cameras on board, that would have given you a different, mm -hmm. uh, a different stream yeah. of data, which would have been interesting. Um, thank you very much for the answer. Uh, the next question we have is from Taichi, who asks, or who says, it seems uh, quantification is the key mm. to define a good requirement. This can sometimes be challenging, especially when we explore places where we never went to before. What would your advice be to people who want to do a challenging mission like that, exploring somewhere that we've never been or, or perhaps obtaining data which has never been obtained before um, the perseverance uh, rover for instance uh, is actually including microphones uh, on board uh, so when that lands uh, they'll be able to for the first time actually hear the martian environment mm. um, and that's just one component added to a system uh, but what would be your your take on that professor Winner? Yeah, this is very important question. <laughs> it's a very difficult question. The level of challenge, or yes, we need a challenge. We need a challenge in the space missions because the new challenge will give us a new world in future. But, uh, it must be feasible or mostly feasible <laughs> within the uh, human resource, but uh, this balance is very, very difficult. In some challenge, will uh, 
give us a very good opportunity to train the uh, engineer and also the scientist. And the balance of the risk and the challenge is every, every time very difficult issue for any types of missions. For example, Japanese Hayabusa mission. This is very, very challenging mission in Japan. Many new things in single missions. But uh, at that time, most of all engineer in ISAS was concentrating on the development of the challenging part of the single spacecraft. And we got many things, even some of the very big trouble of the during the operation. But it must be very important for us to get many things and we learn many things from the challenge. So, but <laughs> if the mission in vain, it must be very difficult situation for us, but the balance of the technical or scientific challenge and the also the our ability or something like that. <laughs> very difficult question. Yeah, I see. I think I understand. So it's it's really uh, finding that balance between risk, uh, reward, mm. and feasibility uh, of mm. the the project itself, uh, in order to try and have the best mm. success. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question from uh, Charleston. Uh, this is a very general mm. uh, question. Mm. Um, it's talking yeah. about iterations of the deep space mission. Mm design compared to that of uh, an earth orbiting mission um, and how uh, that process would be different. So how is the iteration process of deep space missions different to that of earth orbiting missions? Um, and mm. how many more iterations are you likely to need to do in order to have a mission which would be successful? Yeah. Uh, for the spacecraft just uh, uh, orbiting the Earth, we have many samples. And uh, in many cases, the boundary condition is not the TBL comparing to the deep space missions. Because in the deep space area, we have very uh, severe limitation for the uh, power budget and also the mass budget, and in some cases, uh, schedule budget, because in some cases, uh, for example, the, you remember the Voyager mission. Voyager mission can perform at that time only mostly uh, one chance in 200 years or something like that because the allocation of the each planet because it uh, uses used the, some of the uh, gravity assist of many, many planets just like uh, uh, just swing by by any planet. <laughs> so, uh, so the constraint is much, much severe in the deep space missions. Uh, so the iteration must be very severe. In, in the uh, Earth orbiting uh, satellite, we have some of the relaxed situation. So it means a very small times of iteration, usually. I see. Well, that actually uh, brings me to uh, another question. Um, mm -hmm. which I, I had myself. I, I was just thinking about how we could best adapt the strategies that you've spoken about for mission design for mm -hmm. a project which has little or, or no budget and limited resources. Uh, let's mm -hmm. say it has you know, a lot of commercially off-the-shelf com components. Uh, you've got a limited time to build something mm -hmm. uh, and it's much smaller scale. So like a, like a CubeSat University project, for instance, yeah. how could we adapt those strategies you've, talk, you've spoken about, Professor? So you have to concentrate of uh, single object, single objective of the technical challenge or something like that? 
<laughs> so,、uh, you don't have to、uh, get many things in, in one chance. <laughs> Please find out some good objectives for the missions and some interesting objectives. And please concentrate on this. So it becomes more critical that we're focusing on、yeah. the objective that we, that we want to,、uh, and maybe, I suppose, keeping that simple as well、yeah. is、uh, good advice. Thank you very much.、Uh, I'd just like to ask、uh, once more if our attendees、mm. have any more questions. Please post them in the chat now.、Uh, if not,、uh, then I think that we'll probably move on.、Um, so I, I would like to once again just extend、uh, our thanks to you,、uh, Professor Werner.、Um, and,、uh, you know, it's a real pleasure to have you here、uh, and to lend your. Your knowledge and expertise、uh, to us. So,、uh, if the attendees could please join me in thanking、uh, Professor Hueno for his, his lecture. And、um, look, if there is a, a final statement you would like to give, I'd, I'd invite you to,、uh, to do that now if you'd like, Professor. We will be happy to、uh, respond or、uh, answer some of the questions you have. That's a wonderful、uh, offer. Thank you very much. We do appreciate it. Okay, so now we've reached、uh, the end of、uh, the lecture, and I'd like to thank all of the attendees once again for coming.、Uh, I would like to just quickly share with you my screen、uh, very briefly, just to remind you of the dates.、Uh, once again, we have the 7th of the 7th, the 8th, 8th of the,、uh, sorry, the 18th of the 8th,、uh, the 30th of the 9th, and the 20th of the 11th are the, the dates that we're looking at, the important dates here for the contest. So, please, if you haven't written these down, do so or refer to、uh, the Mix 7 website.、Um, I wanted to briefly just go over some of the requirements.、Uh, these are the constraints and requirements for the contest. And this is the first part、uh, of the constraints and requirements. You can find the full list of these on the Mix 7 website.、Um, but the primary requirement for this competition is your idea should be innovative.、Um, You know, potentially an experimental idea or something which is actually going to contribute to deep space science and exploration. So,、um, the more in innovative, the better.、Um, and moving forward in、uh, subsequent lectures, I'll actually go through the、uh, evaluation criteria、uh, with you as well for the competition. But there are some other requirements. Some of them are physical requirements, envelope size,、uh, and mass constraints. As well as the、uh, orbit must be cislunar or deep space trajectory.、Um, and、uh, there has to be an excess velocity of greater than zero kilometers per second.、Uh, you can assume you can use a transponder that's on board of Procyon.、Um, and you can also assume that you can use Earth ground stations like the Deep Space Network. Obviously, we, we, you want to be looking at、uh, operation、uh, of your spacecraft and the, the time. That you can look for that is eight hours of continuous operation per day. The lifetime is a free parameter, so you can、um, essentially plan whatever you would like around that, but、um, you need to consider the effects of radiation on the proposed lifetime. And the proposed launch date for your mission idea should be before 2030.、Um, just a special note on the launcher、uh, delivery. Uh, the relative velocity to the Earth, the excess velocity should be greater than zero kilometers per second.、Uh, and there is a mass uh, relation uh, to the square of the excess velocity, which should be followed according to this figure.、Uh, these details are all listed on the、uh, Mix7 website、uh, if you need them. So we have now completed two of our lectures.、Uh, lecture one is now available for you to view online. Uh, please do so. I posted links to that video on our Facebook page as well as it now is available on our website.、Uh, and、uh, Professor Hueno's lecture will be made available shortly as well. Our next lecture is on Thursday, the 25th of February, and it is on deep space exploration and micro propulsion. And that is、uh, by Professor Kuzimi. So, please join us for that lecture.、Uh, you will receive a reminder email for that one as well. But 
we look forward to seeing you then. And if you haven't downloaded the template, just another reminder to please do so. And the link that you can follow the, for the abstract template is just listed on your screen now. Uh, but once again, I'd like to thank everybody for attending and uh, extend my thanks again to Professor Hueno. And um, we hope that we see you next week. Thank you very much. Take care and goodbye for now.